Well, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here with you today in this wonderful venue and this fabulous city to officially launch the World Federation of Colleges and Polytechnics Global Statement. I want firstly to say a very big thank you to Technica, who are a very important member of the World Federation and who have contributed significantly to this report, our strategy, and our affinity groups. I'm very, very conscious that we all use different technology and terminology. Um, so you may be in the room today, use VET, TVET, or professional training. So please excuse me for using the World Federation's reference of PTET, Professional Technical Education and Training. So let me now just give you some background and context to our statement, which is inclusive and has a global focus and context. Its purpose is to coordinate PTEP providers around the world through a common focus. It calls for a global offer that considers in its response the impact of COVID-19 and looks at the contribution that professional technical education and training can make to the world's response, its recovery, its resilience, and reimagination following the pandemic. We are very clear that PTET's time around the world has come. Communities across the globe are all at various stages of grappling with the devastating social and economic effects of COVID-19. We recognize that the impact of this has not been evenly distributed, as we've seen the pandemic play a very uneven hand on the socio-economic impact for individuals and countries. We have prepared our global statement to signpost the power and impact that PTET can have in ensuring social justice is delivered as we all recover from this awful pandemic. We know that our members are committed to the highest standard of education and training, to empower individuals into contributing to mainstream economics and social life by preparing them as productive workers, entrepreneurs, and creative human beings. Our main purpose for this global statement to convey the tremendous impact that can be achieved if we galvanize our collective efforts from across the world. This awful invisible virus has disrupted the world, impacting most aspects of everyone's lives. As countries embark on recovery, we offer our global statement to stimulate discussion and action on priorities and strategies for professional, technical education and training, to engage individuals, communities and organisations so that we rebuild a post-pandemic world that is equitable for all. We must never forget the devastation that COVID-19 brought to our world. Our research showed that more than 4 million people lost their lives. 144 million jobs were lost. 1.6 billion informal sector workers had their livelihoods impacted by pandemic-related closures, and countless lives have been disrupted in so many other ways. However, the years ahead are also likely to bring significant changes for us all. Some researchers are projecting that one in 16 workers are expected to find a different occupation by 2030. Governments from around the world are looking to develop stronger, more resilient, sustainable economies and societies 
And we all know that for the world to build back better from this dreadful pandemic, they need PTET. It must be recognised as one of the fundamental building blocks in every country. We know that PTET is needed for short-term recovery through upskilling and reskilling workers. That it's a key enabler and driver of longer-term prosperity as it drives innovation, developing the workforce to meet future skills needs and underpinning wider economic policy and industrial strategies. That it's an important tool for empowering individuals and disadvantaged groups. It supports poverty reduction and social inclusion. And it's key to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Clearly, the global technological shift made throughout the pandemic has helped us all in advancing our use and interaction with technology. It's enhanced our creativity, our entrepreneurial skills, our teaching, learning and assessment through blended learning. And it's made the world a much smaller place to share and learn. It may have destroyed many businesses, but it has birthed many more that will continue to adapt to the new ways of working and living. So despite its devastation, COVID has also brought some great benefits, which cannot be underestimated. Humanity now has a great, great platform to catapult and create, through PTET, a dynamic, equitable, sustainable world of the future. The key findings from our report puts forward six priorities for the future of PTET and 10 recommendations for governments and institutions, whilst recognising that different countries are all at different points on the PTET journey. Our six priority areas where PTET systems and partners must adapt to respond to the challenges and opportunities presented by the pandemic are the need to support citizens to navigate and overcome the repercussions of the pandemic, unleashing the full potential of interactive digital technology in PTET. And we've heard, haven't we, this morning and yesterday about wonderful examples of that. It's also about making lifelong learning a reality. And Sue, I was really pleased to hear you mention that term. It's something you know, that should never go away. It's always ongoing. Evolving curriculum and assessment models to respond to the requirements of the modern world of work. Developing the workforce that can deliver PTEC for the modern age. And developing the partnerships and collaborations locally, nationally, and internationally, because we learn so much from each other. Our 10 recommendations are that PTEP providers should work with other partners to support and develop the sharing of high quality, accessible digital resources. Providers should ensure the design and training, including modes of delivery, outreach and content is inclusive and caters for new groups of learners who may need to undertake PTEP for the very first time. PTEP providers should invest in embedding technology where appropriate into their learning and operating models to realise the benefits of blended PTEP. Governments should support providers to develop and scale innovation and business support activity, and both should provide support for PTEC teachers to upskill and improve their own capabilities and digital pedagogy. 
Government should fund the expansion of PTET opportunities for individuals who have lost employment or who may be at risk of losing employment due to the pandemic supporting them to build their skills and quickly transition to new employment opportunities. Government should support PTEP providers to address learning loss among young people and existing learners, including through extending learner entitlements and giving providers flexibility to design and implement catch-up programmes. Governments should work in partnership with the private sector and others to extend digital infrastructure and internet connectivity to enable equitable access to digital learning. Governments should give providers greater flexibility in funding, regulation, curriculum, accreditation and assessment to enable them to deliver against education and training that aligns with economic need and learner demand. Providers should be judged principally on the extent to which they support their learners to achieve their intended outcomes. Recognising likely future changes to skills demand beyond the pandemic, government should invest in an expansion of professional education and training and lifelong learning programmes for people currently in work and ensure that sufficient funding is available to enable learners to participate regardless of their age or background. Government should support providers to develop and scale innovation and business support activity. And finally, development founders and multilateral agencies should provide technical and financial support in low and middle income countries to adapt their PTET systems to realise the opportunities and mitigate the challenges set out in our full report. We recognise that there are significant opportunities for PTEP to play a key role post-pandemic in rebuilding economies and societies that benefit all. These extend from working with local, small to medium enterprises to collaborating globally, from targeting underrepresented groups for training programmes to upskilling adults and change those changing careers, from enabling young people through work-based learning to building capability in existing staff. However, realising these opportunities will require investment, including financial investment from governments and providers and employers, but also an investment from individuals in terms of time. Our full statement is available on our website with much more detail in than I could do justice in 10 minutes. I'm sure that all of you, like me, have gained a great deal from this conference to take away and share and learn to help shape all of our futures. I hope that all of you will join us here in June as the Bass Government and Technica will be hosting the World Federation of Colleges and Polytechnics. So I hope to see you there, but before I leave, I really do want to recognise and applaud each and every one of you for the great work that you have all done throughout the pandemic to support young people, families, staff, each other, businesses and your communities. So I want to say a heartfelt thank you for all the lives that you have touched, for the inspiration that you have given, for your great leadership and for all that you will do in the future as you help your cities, your regions and countries 
grow their future economies and societies through high quality, entrepreneurial, professional, technical education and training. Thank you very much and enjoy your coffee.